Good morning world. So I figured today was going to be a day. It's my one day off this week. I wanted to go and take you guys on a hike, but as you can tell, mother nature is really not going to work out for us today. I have been helping a buddy uh, who about a year ago, year and a half ago now, lost his house to a fire that went through a neighborhood, completely destroyed a town. And ever since then, we have been kind of gradually putting the property together. He just recently got his house, you know, industry standards on uh, some houses nowadays just aren't what they used to be. So this video is probably going to be me heading up to his property and we are going to texture and get the house prepped so we can get it painted. Like I said, the house just got uh, dropped off there about, I, I want to say three weeks ago, a month ago. I'm not quite sure, but we have a lot of work to do and today is my day off. I want to help him. You will see him in future bus builds. He is what I consider to be one of my best friends. Um, I like to help out a lot of people and who's the guy that I can call when I need help. So anything that I can do when he needs it, if I have the ability to do it, or if I have the time to take off to help him, hands down, I always try to accommodate him um, because he helps us out so much with our stuff. So this video is going to be a, a video where I'm going to take you up there. We'll kind of show you. I might try to figure out how I can drop in some pictures of what the fire looked like and what the neighborhood looked like um, after it was devastated by the fires. So yeah, let's uh, let's do that today. I'll see you guys uh, here in the next couple minutes. guys so we're up here at my friend paul's house he just got the house dropped here about a month ago the last two weeks he's been working on the inside getting the walls ready for texturing today's project will be getting the interior textured and ready for paint few facts about otis oregon they had the echo mountain fire about i want to say a year and a half or two years ago now every single house you see behind me is brand new so every single house on this side of the neighborhood was lost so i mean every every house everything has been getting rebuilt everybody's coming back it's nice it's an awesome community out here the majority of these people they work in lincoln city and around lincoln city and it's just nice not being in town but just being outside of town the fire actually started uh up on this mountain behind me and just absolutely ripped through the the neighborhood here so uh weather's not really playing the uh role for the hike that i wanted to do today but my friend wanted some help and i told him that i'd come and help him out he helps me out so much so i figure it's the least i can do this house was forty thousand dollars um they drop it hook power up and everything but man industry standards once we get in i'll show you what's going on and why we're texturing instead of just getting the final product finished so all right so here we are inside the house uh there's obviously a bunch of work that has been done since the house got dropped off everywhere where you see new mud all of that has needed to be fixed so we just got to mask off the uh, kitchen area, the countertop area, start slinging some mud. So as we come through here, uh, like I said, this house only costs 40 grand, which makes it super easy and convenient. If you have property, 
you want to put a small house on it you want to just have something a lot of the bus community is watching my youtube page right now if you plan on being out on the road and you want to have something that can potentially make you money while you're on the road and you have a little piece of property this is very cost efficient me personally i plan on spending at least forty thousand dollars getting atlas finished so if you have a small piece of property and you want to invest 40 grand and drop a house like this on your property and rent it while you're out and about and get some income coming in it's a fantastic thing i mean the bathroom full stand-up shower toilet sink uh, all matching countertops bedroom nice and big for the size of the house but like i said as you can tell industry standards almost every single seam had a crack or the paint was chipping or the texture was chipping all of this has had to get fixed and cleaned up so we can get some texture on the walls all of it all of this crazy i think he's uh been up here now i think this is the second or third week just finding imperfections and stuff needing to get finished. So we're almost there. We got, like I said, we still have to mask off the kitchen, a couple other spots, and then we'll get at it. So come along for the ride. So as you can tell with uh, masking everything off, we have, I'm not in any of my good clothes. Uh, I'm in my old, Hard Rock Vegas hoodie that I've had for years. It's got holes, it has paint, all that, all over it. But I absolutely love the hoodie and we're just gonna get this finished so we can get this stuff taped off and make sure we can uh, get this all taken care of and handled for them. So, we wanna be up nice and tight against the wall. Make sure no texture can get in underneath the tape. Yeah, you always want to mask off your lines because overspray is a pain. Uh, mud does tend to harden, and when it hardens, you're going to be sanding it off. So, if you can attack it before it dries, when it's still wet, you can wipe it off. But we try to make sure that you know you're not going to have that problem in the first place. So, the nice thing is the fridge will be here. It's not really going to be a visual thing. The area above the stove is definitely going to be a visual thing, especially um, if you're sitting here on the couch, hanging out or eating lunch or, you know, you're going to see underneath the hood of the microwave vent. So you want to make sure that that's going to be masked off nice and you don't have to worry about any imperfections in your paint job or your texture job. Another easy trick, 
when you're by yourself and you don't uh, have a second person or something at that point in time. Once you got your outline done, you got your plastic, just take a small little piece of tape. Small little piece of tape. Get yourself lined up. Make sure your corner is going to cover the edge. And get it sitting up here. Lock it down. Grab another piece of tape. Figure out where your corner is going to be at. Basically, you're just trying to get your outline so you can come in, cut, mask off, finish the areas in between so the texture can't get in underneath the plastic and ruin your wood. Um, so yeah, we'll just... And then another easy trick when you're working with plastic on cabinets. So when you're coming up to a corner and it's going to be a pain, you don't want to just put tape on it and just let it flail. You don't want any plastic flailing because if you're shooting texture, that air, the wind that's coming out of that gun is going to flap that plastic possibly right up against your texture. So you can do it two ways. First way, you can just bring the plastic right up against the wall, figure out where it is, make a little seam, fold it back behind it, and then right up against the wall and tape it. I don't like doing that because sometimes like I said, that wind, it'll, fl it'll flap that, it'll rip the tape off, and then you have this giant piece flailing against that wet texture. So we're just going to cut this real quick and uh, get this taped up and finish this side real fast. everything masked off we're gonna come in here we have all of the uh, light switches all masked up so got the shower surround done windows shower head we got all the mirrors medicine cabinet sink everything we were able to get the carpet in here all done masked off all the windows are masked off so yeah, but I mean, all this is crazy. So cool stuff about these little houses, okay? It has 400 square feet or just under 400 square feet. It costs 40K and they literally show up ready other than 
a little bit of TLC that needs to be done. Cause when these manufactured homes drive down the highway, all that shaking vibration, they tend to crack, they crack in corners, you know, stuff like over here and then along here. Um, it's just cause the sheetrock vibrates. You know, these, these houses are meant to stay in one spot, not to go down the highway. You know, we always talk in bus life, you know, stuff is going to be under constant vibration. You need to make sure you use quality hardware, quality stuff, because our buses are consistently in an earthquake every time they roll down the highway. And this is just an example of what one trip, it came out, one trip down the highway caused all these seams. There was a big giant area here, over here. I mean, a big split where two pieces of sheetrock came apart there. So yeah, there's a lot that needs to be done. He could have outsourced this and got like a contractor to come in and do it. It would have probably been like three to $5,000 of mudding, taping, fixing high low spots, um, fixing the buckles, coming in texturing, then painting, just not in the cards. So we're gonna get this handled. There'll probably be another video once we can get it all done painted. Uh, we can do a quick walkthrough uh, and kind of show you guys the finished project. But until then, let's get on this, start getting it textured and get this on the, get this finished. So if you're ever needing to spray texture or use this specific gun, if you've ever used like a paint gun, you'll know exactly kind of the type of gun that I'm talking about. Uh, they're similar, uh, this one, about the easiest and most basic gun to have. You can control your flow rate with this for your incoming air. You have your multiple heads so you can change your head size. What I like to do is a lot of people tend to like thick texture, small texture, go super light. All of that can be controlled by your air and your consistency coming out of the gun. I really don't measure with the head. I tend to just, if I want like an orange peel kind of texture, I'll do a lot of water in the texture and go light with the airflow. Um, if you want a really heavy flow, you can go heavy on the air, super thick on the texture. I like to keep the medium head on here and just go with the flow, as they say. Uh, it has a plastic funnel that attaches to the top of the gun. And then we got one of our coolest old time uh, air compressors on the market. Is an absolute animal. Like it is, I, I can't even get it in the in the same picture as me, but it's fantastic. It likes to spit oil. We're gonna run it inside the house and see how well she does. It has enough volume, the tank. You don't wanna be using like a small pancake compressor because you need to have that good flow, a consistent flow coming out of the gun. One thing with your volume of flow, you want it as solid and consistent because you don't want to be shooting little having to wait for the air to pick back up because it'll usually start to glob coming out of the gun and you can back up the gun then you're sitting there taking it apart cleaning it out reattaching it going for another 10 15 minutes happens to see again take it apart do it all over again it can be solved by having just a big enough tank with a solid enough flow rate to keep you going throughout the project. So let's get at it. Also cool little fun trick is when you are painting and texturing, come on in here and use them uh, Q-tips for those uh, threaded holes for the studs so you don't get any paint in there. But yep, yeah, we're going to start getting the last of this all mashed. All of our bases, making sure everything is ready to go. We still gotta tape off uh, these little light switches and so the best way honestly to mix these up is going to be by hand um a lot of people they'll use mixers but the only real way you can get a good consistency 
and know you got exactly what you want is just by doing it by hand. So get it all taken care of. Spatula. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. I think that is exactly what you want. Paul, go ahead and check that. Let me know if that's uh, good for you. Cool, sweet. Let's get back, wash your hands, and get sprayed. We are. So we're gonna get the airline hooked up to it. Did have to move the compressor outside uh, because of its age, it is quite loud. And uh, being able to talk to you guys, is gonna be a real problem if the compressor was inside. So we have a little lean to that we have, it's raining outside. We're gonna just get this started and we'll take you to the bedroom. So in the bedroom, uh, we're actually gonna do some test sprays. You really do wanna test your texture because you want to do it somewhere where you're not going to see it. We're going to not be seeing this area because there's going to be a built-in armoire area. Uh, you can also do them in the closet. Uh, but you want to make sure your texture is going to be good and consistent. That being said, you want to at least let this kind of harden up, tack up. They do tend to change shape a little bit, so you'll be able to find any high or low spots on the walls. And then you're also wanting to make sure that any repairs that you did to the walls, if that's why you're texturing or if you just want to get a good even coat 
uh, you'll want to just go in and double check make sure any high spots before it's completely hard you can knock down with your finger and then just give her a little a little dab dab but yeah so the bedroom is textured Let's see if i can get that so all right here we go uh we got the majority of it all done we still have some sections in the ceiling to get done we thought five buckets were going to be enough to get the whole house done but it's just not in the cards so we're going to get at least another full bucket because there's always going to be touch-ups afterwards so um yeah we're going to uh head on down to town and get some and then head on up so oh man weather's getting better weather's starting to look better too so maybe we'll figure something out all right guys so now that we are kind of happy with how the texture is the nice thing is that now that this just has to dry for a day or two once it dries uh there's these guys i don't know if i can really get them on get them on camera but these big big blobs um here here these guys right there you can actually once it's dry you can use your finger and just pop them off uh, and then you can always have like a damp sponge and just kind of go over that area because when when they chip off you'll see they'll be very significant little craters and then when the sponge when you use your sponge it'll smooth that crater out and then you can go in get your paint done get all your trim done get all your plates back on but yeah now i just got to get this uh all unmasked and go from there i mean these are cool little houses cool little houses and for the fact that industry standards say that when this got dropped off it was ready to basically move into minus hooking up utilities which was definitely not the case. Um, I don't know if you can see that very well, but this whole area across to the top and then back down, that whole area had to get treated because there were like two big cracks. And then you can see this area that was fixed as well. Earlier in this video, you'll see all of the areas that were addressed and you know our buses and stuff they are consistently on the road they're constantly in the middle of an earthquake because you're flying down the road that's why we don't use sheetrock <laughs> that's why a lot of our building material choices revolve around other industry standards like marine rv stuff that can handle that kind of abuse because this house just did one trip down the road and required all of this to be done so yeah we'll be doing a video we're gonna unmask this get some paint on it we'll come back do another one uh, in regards to paint if you guys want to see the paint one let me know let me know in the comments and we can uh we'll go from there you know if you guys want to see how to do house stuff i don't know you might not know how to do this but this gives you the knowledge it gives you the opportunity to see the tools that's needed to do the job and to get the job done. Uh, it's really simple and basic. You basically just shoot it on the wall. If you like the texture, go for it. If you don't, switch the nozzle, switch your air pressure, figure out what works best for you. Practice on a spot that's not gonna be noticeable like inside of a closet or behind something that's gonna probably permanently be there like some built-ins, which there'll be an armoire in the bedroom so that will that's why we use that test wall but yeah i mean we'll get this all done and we'll show you guys the uh the end
off to the rest of the house. Um, what I figure is once we get all the lighting and all of the other fixtures unmasked, we'll let it sit for a couple days, see what it looks like, see how many big pieces are sticking up on the walls, knock those off, smooth it with a damp sponge, um, and then come in and start masking for paint. So this is where we'll leave it off. We got everything kind of unmasked and uh, we're gonna pull in the dehumidifier in here and see uh, if we can get all the moisture out of this and get it dry. Uh, my next day off will be coming Sunday. So should be able to be back up here and painting. You know, you're not familiar with texturing. If you're not familiar with using an air compressor and a texture gun. Hopefully this video kind of shows you just how simple and easy it is. I'm not the best when it comes to this, but I have equipment and if a friend needs my help and I have the opportunity to help them out, I usually try to help people out. This here is my sixth house I've textured. So I'm I would like to say I'm familiar enough with all of this. I'm pretty sure a lot of you viewers that will kind of take on this goal will have a house that's probably four times this size and will be, you'll get really familiar really fast with the texture gun and the compressor. Like I said, consistency of the material you're shooting and airflow. That's really the only two things you really need to worry about if you want to undertake this for your house. Cool thing with texture, there's so many different kinds of type styles, ways to do it. This is a single shoot uh, where you just basically mask everything off, you shoot it, let it dry off to paint. There's also a tack down which you shoot, let it dry, you shoot it again and then you go in and you wipe it. So that's that's the texture that you'll see that'll be flat with kind of craters in it. Uh, that first shot when it's dry allows you to skim coat the second shot uh, and gives you a different look of texture. So hopefully this video helps somebody out and by all means the videos that I'm putting out right now are going to be ma mainly me going on hikes, going on adventures until we get better weather. The sun is finally starting to come out. It's about 5.30 at night, so I will not be able to get a hike in this, this weekend, but I will keep giving you guys content that you can sit down, learn something new, or, you know, have fun going on an adventure with me somewhere. I would love to show just what my life is like uh, to give you guys an idea that, yeah, a 40-foot bus can take three, maybe four years to complete. My bus, we had a goal of three years. Uh, we're coming up on year three here pretty soon. So I would like to see our bus on the road, ready to go, fully finished by all of this year. Well, I don't know, I have no idea. The, there's so many thoughts going on in my head. Like, I would love to be full-timing in the bus by my birthday next year. So, let's look forward to that. Hopefully we can make that a thing. My eyes are burning because there's so much, so much stuff in the air right now, so I'm going to hop off. Thanks for watching this, uh, this episode. And 
we'll see you guys next Sunday. Bye.